What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be giving some notes and feedback on designs that were sent in by you. Let's go. What's up everyone? First of all, thank you to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. It means so much that you guys are watching these videos, so thank you. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving some notes and critiquing some designs that were sent in via Instagram. Uh, basically, I put up a story and I said, yo, send in some designs that you guys have created, either you know using my presets and tools, not using it, send in whatever you want. I'll take a look and uh, give some feedback. I have a feeling we're gonna find that a lot of the same mistakes are being made over and over um, as I go through these designs. So hopefully, you know, you can watch this, we can all learn something and avoid those mistakes in the future. So I think without further ado, let's jump into my computer and see what's going on. So I got a ton of submissions. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who sent something in. Um, I picked out 15 people. Basically, like if you were not selected for this, it was just because someone sent in a design before you did and the notes would have been very similar. Um, so just pay attention to what I'm saying and most likely you'll be able to apply whatever critique I give to whatever design you sent in, you know what I mean? So let's just start off with at uh, underscore Benji Blanco. Is it the brother of Benny Blanco? I don't know, could be. Okay, so Benji, I like this concept. I like that it's a Dallas champion shirt, like for the Mavericks and the Cowboys. That's a cool concept in itself. So nice work with that. Um, the Using this full color image, how you did very small is probably not a great idea. I would either make it like grayscale or blue or teal. Um, it, there's just really no point in introducing a full color image when it's going to be that small, you know what I mean? When the design otherwise is mostly grayscale and blue and, and teal and colors like that. So um, I would either nix this all together, put something else here, or like I said, make it grayscale, blue, something else. Um, using this circle here for this particular purpose, I don't think really works. Like, I like the idea of using the city of Dallas, like, I don't know if this is from the flag or from what, I don't know, but like, using this like symbol or emblem is cool in itself, but using it in this way doesn't really make much sense because you're just left with all this like black negative space, um, which isn't always a bad thing, but in this case, I don't think it really works. Um, if you are gonna use a circle like this, like really like make it more effective. Like maybe you could put this image inside of the circle instead, um, the trophies popping out or something, you know, but um, there's just really no point in introducing elements like this if you're not gonna, you know, use it in like an effective way. Um, I think lastly, this text for Mavs and Cowboys, it wasn't really a great choice, not because the font was bad, but because you used an effect on the font that I, you can't really even tell what the effect is. That's something you guys really have to make sure you're paying attention to. Um, not all fonts are created equal when it comes to using textile packs. Um, so like if you're gonna apply uh, whatever kind of effect to it, this is like a chrome sort of like effect, um, make sure that you're using a font where you can see what the effect is. This is very difficult to tell what it is. Um, you know, there's just not enough room for the effect to breathe adequately. So it would work, it would have worked much better like on this Dallas Cowboys text or just using another font entirely or just not using this effect. Like I said, the font choice is not terrible, but just using this effect wasn't a great idea. See, they use my background on this, appreciate that. I love the big rings, I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, a lot of potential here, but just some things could definitely be tweaked. So moving on, we've got at A-S-T-I-I-I-K, Aztec, Aztec, I don't know, Aztec is weird, but let's see what we got. All right, cool. So I really wanted to include a design like this because a lot of times brands will send me um, you know, designs that they've done for their clothing line and it'll be just a simple logo tee and they'll be like, Fuller, can you give me some feedback on this? Or like, what do you think? Here's my opinion on using logo tees when you're just starting out as a new clothing brand. So 
it is very hard to get away with this unless your logo is super super unique or the the garments that you're using are super unique and like custom you know you're you've got some crazy like pattern t-shirts or cut and sew garments something that makes you stand out from the crowd so that your logo can just be simple and you're relying more on the garment itself right this in this case their logo isn't really that unique it's just like a font and then it's just a black t-shirt with white ink so like the idea of a new brand trying to stand out in the crowd with just a logo T is just like not like it's just not something that's going to work like unless fucking LeBron James is going to be wearing this shirt like you're not going to get very far. What I would suggest is saving any logo T stuff for when you're more well established like you know very well established brands um, you know, name whoever you want, fucking Supreme, Off-White, like Fear of God, like whoever, like all those brands, they can get away with just putting their logo on a shirt because everyone knows that their logos, everyone knows the brand name. If nobody knows who you are, it's unlikely they're going to be interested in just a plain shirt with your logo on it. Okay. So as far as the bat graphic, Again, it's sort of the same thing. Like you're, it's, it doesn't really mean any, like it doesn't mean anything to me. Like, I don't know what this means. If it means something to whoever made this, that's cool. Um, but I think the average person is just gonna look at this and it's just gonna be like, yeah, sort of like a techie futuristic thing with some Asian characters. That's cool. Again, it's something that you could probably get away with if you were a more well-established brand, but this is sort of like, something that's been done so many times it's, it's not really that unique so i think i don't want to make this all negative it's a very clean graphic the logo and all that is very clean um the the mock-up is good like all that stuff but i think there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of the concept itself and like trying to create something that's really going to set yourself apart from the millions of other brands especially on instagram uh that are out there Moving on, we've got at bodybag underscore C. Let's check this out. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to include this because this person actually printed their design. Um, so they're kind of going for like the bootleg, like collage sort of look. They did a pretty good job of, you know, cutting out Eminem, um, you know, creating some depth and the photos look high resolution, so we're all good there. Um, it looks like a different, like they use selective color on this, but it looks like a different preset was used for this photo and these photos. Um, what, this is just my maybe my personal preference, but I think if you're gonna use selective color presets, use the same preset for all of the photos. Um, because kind of the idea behind those selective color presets is that they create a vintage style uh, graphic and th they should really, in theory, like all kind of be the same tone and the same hue. Um, and again, that, that might just be my opinion, but I think it just looks better when everything is more like cohesive, um, you know, color wise. So that's a suggestion. I don't necessarily think that this text effect works with Eminem like again that might just be my preference but like I, I don't this doesn't scream like Eminem to me um, I think they could use something different here um, yeah other than that I would maybe add another element to this because they're really just relying on like this text effect and photos maybe add like a line down here or like maybe another element a circle some kind of shape um, something that would like kind of create a little bit more depth to this um like i said before they, they did a nice job of having like you know m going over the text going over these photos that's cool but i think adding like one or two more elements really would have pushed this to the next level so looking at what i think is the back of the t-shirt um again here it looks like they did use the same selective color for all the photos it's a little hard to tell um as far as like putting the photos in circles I don't want you guys to rely on that as like a crutch. And what I mean is don't just put it in a circle and, and be like, oh, I'm done, like that's it. 
go to the next thing. Like what if like M's head was like poking out here? What if his hand was poking out here? What if the background was like grayscale and M was color? Like you could make this way more dynamic if you just spend a little bit more time on it. Um, as far as the text layout, that I think could have been better. Like I think they can get away with this text and this on the bottom. This I am looks sort of just like thrown in there and it's the same font, just like stretched out to like take up more space. Um, in my opinion, if you're gonna use a font, use the same size of font at, like everywhere or very, very close. Um, I don't really like it when fonts are stretched out when they're, they're used somewhere else in the design, just like, Standard does that make sense? I think if this was an entirely different font and it was like warped or like skewed to Take up this space a little bit better. It would be way more effective um, But yeah, other than that they definitely have like the bootleg vibe down I mean this looks like it was it was maybe printed in like a parking lot somewhere. So nice work with that But yeah overall, I think the bones are there, but there's room for improvement. Next up, we've got at ferg.fx. What do you got, Ferg? Okay. Yeah, this is dope. Um, I really like this, actually. I, I'm not gonna have a ton of notes for this. I had a few questions. Um, the font, I don't really like the font choice, but I don't know if it's the, if, if this is the Iron Man font, cool, because that makes sense. If it's not, then I think it's kind of weird, but I'm not really sure. Um, I like that it's super saturated, like that's kind of a cool move. Um, you know, typically when I see a lot of like the bootleg stuff, it's pretty like desaturated or it's just like plain, you know, full color photos. Um, this kind of gives it like a unique vibe for sure. And it could be something that just like becomes their style. Um, they did a good job at cutting out these photos. Like it looks really great. I think the stroke on this Wu-Tang logo is a little too thick. I would pull back on that a bit. It looks like a little too chunky. If it was closer to this Supreme clientele um, text or logo, I think it would be way, way more effective. Um, I like that they use the same effect for the ghost face and killer text. They just switched up the color. Nice work on that. So yeah, overall, I think this is pretty good. The layout's good. Um, I don't have a ton of notes for this. Uh, I just wanted to include a second one for this, that's right. So I wanted to point out that like this person is starting to, I looked at this ferg.fx Instagram and they're sort of trying to like cultivate this look where it's like very saturated colors. It has like this bootleg vibe. Um, I like that. I think it's cool to try to like create your own style and like keep doing it. And like, so when people come to your Instagram page, they're gonna see like, wow, like this person has really developed this unique sort of design style. And the only note I had on this was the NERD text. I think it's a little strange where like it's yellow and red here, but then the rest is pretty much just red. I think if they had picked like one or the other, like either the yellow and red gradient um, here and doing that throughout or just the red with the yellow outline, it would have been more effective. Um, I like that this, this little like glimmer here, this like bling sparkle thing. I don't know if that was like part of the photo originally or what, or if they added it, but it looks pretty cool. So yeah, not a lot of notes for this. I'd say keep it up, like keep doing that like bright saturated vibe. It's pretty dope. Next up we've got at I am underscore dash Carrera. And again, if I'm butchering any of these names, sorry about that. So, okay. So with this particular design, there's a lot going on. And I'm gonna have a lot of notes on this, but the overall note I'm just gonna say right off the bat is just don't do so much. Um, so we'll just go from the bottom up. Like the Williams font choice, I get what you're trying to do. Like it's like ice cream, so you used a font that has like snow capped, like a snow capped top to it or whatever. Like it's like an icy cold font, like I get it. Um, it's gonna come off cheesy like, don't just, in my opinion, like don't use those types of fonts that are like meant to look like, oh, this is icy, this one's on fire. Like it just looks cheesy, like nine times out of 10. So I would avoid that. Secondly, the text style you use for this would technically work 
probably pretty well, but not with this font. And right now the text is so smushed together, it's honestly kind of hard to read. Like the I blends in with the L. Obviously we all know it says Williams, but just pay attention to that. So moving up, it looks like they're doing the same thing with the selective color that the M&M design was doing where they used a different preset for each photo. It looks like maybe the same one here, but a different one here. Again, use the same preset. I guarantee it's gonna look better. It's gonna look more cohesive. So using the Bape camo in the background, I, I like the idea of using the Bape camo, but not as a background. I think it just like, it, it uses, it's gonna use too much ink. Like if you left this as a black background and instead you applied the Bape camo to like the Williams text or the Pharrell text, it would look better, I guarantee it. Um, and the and the, using the Pharrell, for, there's a few there's a few issues with the Pharrell text up top. Um, I think using the like money background doesn't really vibe with Pharrell, and having it be green when there's like no green anywhere else in the design doesn't really work. And then having it as like this fish, like warped skewed thing, it it's not great. Like just. Have it be normal. Same thing with Williams. You did like a fisheye thing. You're doing too much. Like just because you can do something or just because you can add a, a textile or a, you know, warped effect to text doesn't mean you should do it. Like some of the most successful, you know, like bootleg style shirts that I've seen that have sold, you know, millions of t-shirts are just like straight up plain text. So like that alone should tell you that as long as like the concept is good and like the photos are good, colors are good, you can just have plain shit and it'll be fine. But don't think that like just adding more stuff will make the design better, because that's not how it works. You have to be tasteful, like I get it, you probably love like Marino Morewood who like has all this different stuff going on, but he's still very tasteful in, you know, the fonts that he's using, the, the colors, the layouts, all that stuff. So yeah, I think overall just don't add so many different elements. Try to, you know, be a little bit more tasteful with your choices. Um, match the colors as much as you can. And just overall try to create a more cohesive uh, layout. So moving on, what do we got? We got at IITSN3L. It looks like it's probably it's Nell, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so. Uh, conceptually, again, I like this. Um, I like the idea of like the two Kobe's, that's cool. Um, I think that should be a lot bigger on the design because it's very small right now. And since you don't have any other elements, this is the main element. Um, but it, it's, it's right now being treated as like a second or third element. Um, honestly, right now the cloud is the first element, which is probably not what you want, but that's like the biggest, most, you know, prominent thing in the design and it's white and nothing else is white in the design. So um, I would definitely pull back on this cloud. I would maybe even do something else beside this. I get the sentiment, like it, it's it's very nice and thoughtful, but like um, I would do something else or just make it a lot smaller. Um, the Mamba Day text, um, the effect is not really working like it's supposed to because of one, the font is too thin in certain areas Two, it's a distress font. Just like as a general point of like advice, don't use the text presets on distress fonts. It's gonna look cheesy. Pers like personally, I don't even like using distress fonts because I think it just doesn't look cool when like you can see it's like very clearly a font. Like the, the two M's look identical with the distressing. If you're gonna use distress, use like a vintage texture and just put it over the text or put it over the whole design. But just, in my opinion, distress fonts are just kind of tacky. Um, using this background in the way that you're using it doesn't really work because you can see too much of it. So it's not really even a background. It's like more of like a, a second or third element as well. Like um, the point of those backgrounds is just to like add a little bit of extra like sauce for like you know, just like showing through the design, but it's not really be meant to be treated as like an element of the design, um, you know what I mean? So um, if you made this imagery bigger, you used a different font, maybe like try it on the bottom of the design as well, 
and maybe take this logo and either move it to the sleeve or like incorporate it more into the design um, so it doesn't just like kind of doesn't look like it's like tacked on at the bottom. I think this would be um, a way more effective design. Shout out to you for using a bunch of my presets and this uh, champion mock-up that I have in the store as well. Really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, keep at it. I like the concept uh, in theory for sure. Um, I just think, you know, there's a lot of room for improvement here. Moving on, we have got at JXR47. What do you got? Okay, so another uh, like basketball shirt, that's cool. So right off the bat, kind of the same issue as that last one with the background um, where there's just a lot of it showing. Um, one piece of advice I wanna give you guys uh, because I get messages all the time where people ask me to critique photo designs and they use photos in exactly this way and I give them the same feedback every time which is like, if you can create a composition where there's like a hierarchy with photos, um, and what I mean by that is like, where like your eye goes to one element first, and then it goes to another place, and then it goes to another place, that like aesthetically is gonna be more effective. Like, this is a case where like, my eye is just like trying to process the whole design at the same time, because all of the photos are so similar in size. So if you can like, you know, in this case, like Isaiah is arguably like the leader of the team. Maybe he's a little bit bigger in the foreground. And then maybe like Joe is like second and like maybe Rodman is a close third. And then Bill and Beer, as far as I'm concerned, you can make him really tiny because he was kind of an asshole. <laughs> but uh, this dude, I'm sorry, I don't know who number 23 is. That's my bad. I, was, I wasn't a Pistons fan. But yeah, I think if you created more of like a sort of, like I said, a hierarchy, um, where one element is bigger and then smaller and just kind of scale it down, it would be more effective. So the font choice, I mean, it's not terrible. It's obviously like an athletic type font. Um, I think there would have been room to like mess around and play around with a few things with that. Maybe like try some different uh, text effects and things of that nature. The background of this design really shouldn't be aqua. It should be more of like this royal blue from the jerseys and from the text. Um, so that would definitely lend itself to, you know, feeling more like a Detroit Pistons shirt. Um, definitely adding maybe a different background entirely. Um, something that was a little bit more geared towards basketball or like towards the Pistons. Maybe it's like a Detroit skyline or like something else. Um, don't just like throw these backgrounds um, into a design just because you have them. Make sure that they make sense with the design if possible, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, lastly, I think adding more elements like maybe the Detroit Pistons logo, maybe like, I don't know, again, like something Detroit related, Motor City, like some extra um, text or something. But yeah, I think you're on your way and like the, the, the design is like, it has some elements that you can definitely use um, but I think you've got some adjustments that could be made. So yeah, overall, I mean, nice work cutting out the, the photos. Um, you know, I, it looks like there's some sort of effect being used on them that I don't think is necessary. Like you could probably just keep them as full color photos. Um, but yeah, just take those notes and um, put them to work in this design. And I think it could be um, a really good uh, concept. So moving on, we've got at King Movie 97. Shout out to King Movie. What do we got? All right, so we've got like a, you know, kind of bootleg esque uh, Nod shirt. So right off the bat, down here where it says Illmatic, it looks like it just says Ill because you can't really read the Matic text. Um, this this shouldn't be this like dark maroon color. Um, it works up here because you've got it outlined in black and white. Um, but if it's all on its own against the black, it's really hard to read. So always be aware of that. The photo of Nas itself, it's got like this area here where it looks like maybe there's a gradient being used or like they used the eraser and got a little too close to his face. Um, but there's like all this detail that's being lost. It kind of just looks like a floating head to be honest, um, which is probably not what you want. 
Um, so I would either choose another photo or just like retouch this photo and make it so you can see kind of what's going on a little better. Um, these circles with the photos, they're too small. I would make them bigger. Um, I don't know why you used this brown color because it's not really used anywhere else. If like you'd used brown for like the skin tones or you'd use them in this text, then it would make sense. Or if like you made these maroon, like the text is up here and then you made Nas's skin tone like brown, that would have worked. But just randomly having these brown doesn't really make much sense. Um, the Nas text itself, I get that it's, you know, three letters, so it's kind of hard, but like, it's so huge. Like it's, it's so huge. <laughs> I would probably make it a lot smaller or just like move it and then make like this, this photo the main element and like put it in the corner or somewhere else. But just having it this huge and having like all this ink as well, like you're going to have all this white ink here. Um, it doesn't really work. I think maybe if this white was black instead, so it was like a gradient of black up to this maroon, it might look better. Um, but yeah, mess around with it, try different placements. Um, and overall, I think this would be a much better design. Next up, at LloydStefan.x. All right, so right away, uh, very colorful, very bold, I like that. Um, I think again, an issue with putting the photo in circles, it's the same thing that I mentioned earlier. Don't just use this um, as a device and then just leave it, like keep playing with it. Like have this basketball be outside of the circle, like add some dimension there, have him shooting outside of the circle, like make the background gray and Allen full color or like, or like make it, make the whole thing, you know, like a gold or something like that. But um, as soon as you think that you're done with something, spend another five, 10, 15 minutes on it and try to think about how you can make it better. The background, I don't really love. I would either remove it entirely, um, or, you know, it looks like they use kind of the space background fused with some photos in a, a rectangle with like a gradient. Like, I, I don't think it really works. Um, let's see, The also the photo of Alan, for some reason, the main photo, like there's this gradient kind of happening at the top. I don't know why that is. Uh, his whole head really should be showing. It would look much better. Um, the glow around the circles, I don't really like that. Um, it looks like there's also like some sort of bevel effect on the circle, which is seems unnecessary. Um, I do like that there's some depth, you know, like Alan's head is going over the circle here and then the circle's going over Alan here and over the text, like that's good. It's always good to have some uh, dimension and depth. Um, the font choices are not, terrible. Um, I don't think using like a thick stroke on the answer text was the best choice. I would have maybe used like a glow or something. Um, I don't know why the text down here is like yellow and gold because it's not really present anywhere else in the design. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think like they did a good job at like, I think in their head it probably looked a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it just comes down to execution and like this sort of has a similar issue to that Pharrell design where like they're just like trying to add more and more stuff thinking that it'll make the design better but they're but they're not considering that like the color choice you know matters a lot and like really what they do with these different elements matters too because otherwise like no offense it could just kind of come off as lazy as it's if it's just like a full color photo in a circle and like that's it so yeah uh, keep at it uh, keep doing this like bright bold stuff I think it's it's a good look next up we've got at Martin X Maramonte hope I pronounced that right okay so yeah we've got like a 90s bootleg kind of thing that they're trying to do um, I see a few things right away this background is present on the right side, but not on the left. I'm not sure why that would be. Um, so there's this huge gap on the left side where they should definitely continue the background over here, but then it would probably be good to add either another element or two, or make sure this full photo of Ice Cube is showing. Cause like, 
I don't know why, just like part of his body is showing. It's kind of leaving this weird like asymmetrical sort of thing where it's look, it just looks very unbalanced. Like asymmetrical is not bad, but unbalanced generally in my opinion looks bad. So um, the Ice Cube font choice, I, I don't, it doesn't scream anything Ice Cube to me. It doesn't scream 90s. It's just, it, I don't know why they chose this font. Um, I would have definitely picked something different. The layout of the text is is decent. Um, I think Lynch Mob could have been a lot taller and and matched this matched the size of Ice Cube. Um, the color choice I don't quite understand. Um, you know I would have either made the bottom blue as well or like made one of them yellow to like match this element um, in the design or like the photo. Um, yeah, I think overall like the the idea is right you know like doing a, a lynch mob like ice cube design is cool but um it looks unfinished so like go back in here add some more stuff here try out some different fonts um also make sure that the pattern on your text style that you're using is the correct uh so, um like scale like this looks like it, it was either scaled way down to like 50 or 25 or it's possible that the canvas was really big so the pattern looked small something I don't know but like check the scale because it's really even hard to tell it's like that bubble pattern but you can barely even tell what it is because it's so small so pay attention to that um, so yeah hopefully those notes um, are helpful moving on we've got at MX SCS underscore underscore what do we got here okay whoa another member of nwa that's cool so right off the bat there's a lot of ink on this right side if this were to print it's just going to be a huge blob of like white and blue which is like not going to be a good look so i would take this i i don't know if this was like a gradient or like it looks like a, an inner glow or maybe but make sure the black like goes more into the design so it like is more of the t-shirt and less of this white color and then maybe like you could move this like graphic over here um to to compensate for that space and then you could probably make this easy text bigger the font choice for this doesn't work um it doesn't work for a few reasons like for one the stroke on the text is way too big the text style, it looks like they're using my heavy metal textile uh, pack and their canvas was too small so the effect isn't working the, the way it's supposed to i get messages like this all the time where people are saying like yo the, the text style doesn't look like it does um in your videos or it doesn't look like it does in the thumbnail and that's because your canvas isn't big enough all of these text styles are meant for t-shirt designs so they're meant for canvases that are you know 15 inches wide by 25 inches in height 300 dpi somewhere in that area um, but if you're just trying to design right on a t-shirt on an image where the canvas is maybe like 1200 pixels wide it's not going to work secondly using this font for this design doesn't make much sense because it's like an easy design so it's probably meant to look like from the 90s like late 80s early early 90s but this font looks like it's like futuristic or like you know robotic or something like so it doesn't really mesh with like the vibe of easy or like nwa um so i definitely changed the font entirely i like the overlay that you used on this photo of the blue that's cool i like that the blue is in the background here and then the photo is grayscale those are all good choices. So yeah, just like make some adjustments um, and uh, you might have a really good design. So what's up next? We've got at Nick Tyler Wilson. All right, so another like bootleg style design. This is more like meant to look like modern, you know? This is what I like to refer to as like the Etsy uh, eBay bootleg shirt. Uh, for whatever reason like in the last like two three years This style has popped up on Etsy and eBay for like people who are selling these like bootleg shirts I don't know why or how it happened, but like it's always like this kind of font which is like 
It's usually like the Nirvana font. This looks like maybe they tried to find that font and they couldn't, so they found something close. Um, Mistral at the bottom here for the script, good choice. I think the text here is a little bit too big. Um, here it's probably too big as well. I would pull back on that a little bit. Um, unless this is gonna be DTG'd, in which case this black is gonna show on this charcoal shirt, I would make sure that um, you're using screen mode when you're mocking the design so that this black isn't showing. Um, this circular photo is too large. It looks a little bit awkward um, currently. Um, I like that this background is like blue tinted with like the full color photos in the front. And this is more of like almost like a sepia, like gold kind of tone. Um, there was some attempt here to match colors, which is good. Um, so, you know, they, they've got the blue in the script text that matches this photo. There's a little bit of matching here, but it's, I think, kind of by accident. Um, you know, the gold in the text here with the photo. So there was definitely some attempt to make this like cohesive from a color standpoint. Um, I think maybe just like they could have went up maybe a step further and like did it a little bit more and made sure that the, the colors were actually truly matching and not just like kind of close, you know what I mean? Um, the size on the t-shirt's good, no issues there. Um, but yeah, I, I would say keep at it. Um, you know, try to um, think of new and interesting ways that you can do this like modern bootleg concept that's not just like kind of doing the same thing that like all those like Etsy and eBay designs are, are doing um, and you know, try something new. Next up, we've got at Ricky Isolation. What do you got, Ricky? Okay. So this is dope. Um, this is a style that I'm definitely seeing a lot more, um, especially like on Instagram where it's like sort of like the 70s, 80s, almost like movie poster, like novel cover vibe. Um, a lot of like real, like bold, like, um, uh, interesting and like uh, sometimes like controversial like imagery being used I think that's dope I like like the little text here I think in this case I would remove the texture um, entirely because this is this would look like a vintage shirt without the texture a lot of times that's the case like you don't necessarily have to add the texture to try to make it look vintage if the imagery is already like sort of um, going in that direction you don't have to add the texture. I think overall the size um, of the graphic on the t-shirt is too large, unless you are literally doing an oversized print, um, which is pretty rare um, for people to do. Um, the, a screen printer is not gonna be able to make it this large. So like, as much as like you have this entire body to work with, cause that was the point of this blank, like I wanted to create something with like a wide enough body that you could really show off graphics. Um, still try to make it realistic to what's going to be printed. You know what I mean? But yeah, overall, honestly, I really like this design and uh, I think it could be a really uh, great t-shirt. All right, so next up we've got at salt.hunxho. Okay, so, can I zoom in on this? Yeah, so, there are quite a few issues with this right off the bat. Most noticeably, it's this black square. So they should just, if they just change this, the blend mode to screen, that would get rid of that. Secondly, the um, mock-up has been squished down. So it's been like uh, compressed to, to look like more narrow. Um, I don't know if that's because they didn't like how wide it was or if it's just something that happened when they saved the, the file, I don't know, but like, so I would say either like use a different mock-up if you want something that's more narrow or you know create a design that looks better on the wider body but like don't just squish it. Um, the font choice is not bad. Um, I wish that like this like blue and purple in this like textile was more present in the design. It looks like they tried a little bit here with this glow but they could have went a lot further with it. Like they could have made um, this like bunny blue or like pink or like something or like 
um, you know, added another element that had that. Um, I always try to like match those colors. It's really gonna help. Uh, it looks like they did a pretty good job cutting out the photo. Um, this white like bunny logo, it's it's a good idea to add it to the design, but I think using it as like a big element in the background doesn't work because it's it's gonna be so much ink being printed right there. And like, granted, if this was like DTG printed, like whatever, but like, um, it's it could be better used elsewhere. Like if it was just like smaller, maybe it was like right here or like in the corner here, and then like the background was another photo or something like that, it would, it would look better. Um, the font choice, is not bad I you know I use review that's what font this is I use it in designs uh, all the time um, but I think like again same issue as a previous design where like they use the same font but they made it bigger um, in one case and then you know smaller in the other so I would probably just change this bad text to something else bunny looks good how it is but like maybe change bad to another font you could maybe even introduce a different um, style so it didn't just look like the same one being used twice. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I think in this case, you'd be better off using something else. Um, but yeah, next up, last but not least, we've got at Trey.mo. Shout out to all the Mo's in the world. So, this design is on its way. Like, you did a really great job of like selecting a nice crisp photo like nice job if you cut out this photo a really good job on that your choice of like um text like presets is good um but this looks like you got like this far and you just like decided it was done when really like you could have spent another you know half hour 45 minutes on this and built out like a way cooler design um, if there was like more, like if you took Travis and you like bumped it over, bumped him over to the left and then like added some more elements here, like, you know, do the photo circle thing or like add a bigger photo in the background or like add the Cactus Jack logo, some other stuff. Um, it looked way better. This like background that you're using, um, you can't really tell what it is. So like, it looks like it may be fire or something, but it's kind of hard to tell. And I think it's gonna print badly. So I would probably remove it or do something else um, and try to like use more colors in the design. Like this full color photo is fine, but like maybe with like secondary elements, like you're pulling some of this like yellow from the text up top um, or something like that. It looks like maybe the strokes are different too on these, like the white stroke. I would make sure those are the same because it looks a little weird um, using the same font and the same size font, but then like the strokes are different. Lastly, I think like the font choice could be better. I think, you know, this, this doesn't really lend itself to like that bootleg style. Like, yes, it is like just a plain font, which as I said earlier, you can get away with sometimes, but like, if you're gonna do that, use a font like use like Arial or use like you know Helvetica or something like that. But I don't know. I for me personally, this doesn't really add much to the design. So yeah, overall, keep at it. It's a very clean design. It just looks kind of unfinished. Um, and thank you so much. It looks like you used a bunch of my presets and, and mock-ups. So I appreciate that. So that is it for this video. I hope that all the notes and the uh, critiques that I gave of these designs is going to be helpful for you. Um, as just an overall like note, uh, this is especially applicable to when you're first starting off with design, but kind of always is useful to think about. Um, treat design and specifically t-shirt design like you're cooking a meal or like you're making soup. Like you wouldn't just go into your cupboard and just like grab a bunch of ingredients randomly and like open up your fridge and just like grab stuff, throw it in a pot and think it's gonna taste good you have to make sure that like everything makes sense together, that all the ingredients work well with each other. So like your subject matter works with whatever background you're using and that works with the font and like everything kind of works together because otherwise you're just gonna end up with like this, you know, mashup of things that are just like 
you know, whatever, like <laughs> they don't make any sense. You know, just because you have all these tools and presets at your disposal doesn't mean that you should necessarily use them. And definitely don't try to like use all of them at once. Thank you for tuning in today. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. I think we're still at like this, like maybe like 70 to 30 ratio where like 70% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. I would love to get that closer to like 60, 40, 50, 50, somewhere in that area. I would be happy with that. Um, you know, I always appreciate people watching the videos, but I just think like if you're watching these, you might as well subscribe because then you'll know when a new video comes out and all that. Subscribing and liking videos also like tells YouTube that like, hey, people are watching these videos, let's show it to more people so we can like keep building this community and design some dope stuff together. As always, be sure to follow me on Instagram. You can also DM me there. Honestly, that's like the best place to get a hold of me. Don't use Facebook. I'm telling you that right now. For some reason, I like never see messages on Facebook. So like I go through like every like Saturday and I'll just like end up replying to like 10 people because I don't see their messages. So trust me, use Instagram. It's at fuller.moe. Um, I'm always happy to hear from you guys. If you have designs you wanna send over for notes or feedback, whatever, I'm happy to do that there. You're the reason that this channel even exists. So I'm always happy to hear from you. So that's it for today. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.